Alright, welcome back to my Dark Souls 1, Soul Level 1 guided walkthrough using the Remastered Edition. And it's time for the DLC, which is completely optional of course, so as this guide is specifically aimed at people who have never done SL1 before, you may not want to include the DLC, because it's definitely a much bigger challenge than most parts of the main game. Regardless, I will cover it for the sake of completion. Uh, the annoying thing of course is that you first have to kill the Hydra, but as long as you don't get hit by its water spewing attack, or have to block two heads at once, you can safely just block and counterattack. And then in the end, it's nothing more than a matter of patience. However, it is smarter to first kill all the crystal golems, which I obviously didn't, but I advise you to not fight them and the Hydra all at once. Also, wearing the rusted iron ring will greatly help you to move around in the water. Once the Hydra is dead, you have to reload the game and then at the very end here, you will find a golden golem, which you have to destroy to free Princess Dusk. Of course, for the sake of fashion, it's very important to summon her, so that her outfit will appear near where the golden golem was. Then if you go back to the Duke's archive, this crystal golem will drop the broken pendant which is the item we need to enter the DLC. Which is a bit convoluted in my opinion, but uh, that's just the way it is I suppose. Alright, the DLC is basically nothing more than a chain of 4 boss fights with only 2 relatively small areas in between them. So let's immediately start off with the Sanctuary Guardian. This boss is lightning resistant, so make sure to use your fire weapon. His lightning attacks are pretty easy to dodge, he will either shoot one large bolt or a flurry of smaller bolts. In the latter case you will have to keep rolling until the final one goes past you. When he flies towards you, that will be the best opportunity to cut off his tail. However, you have to hit the tip of his tail. At the start of this fight, I was basically trying to remember how this fight even went in the first place. Remember that I haven't played this in a while. So unfortunately, I'm actually not doing all that well in this fight. But in essence, the key to this fight is to make good use of your shield and constantly try to get close to the boss. Basically pressing up against him with your shield up, trying to get to his side. This will give you lots of opportunities to attack. Moreover, the reinforced club will easily stagger him. And of course, things definitely get a lot easier if you manage to cut off his tail. Again, you have the perfect opportunity for that when he flies towards you. The specific attack I'm constantly baiting him to do is his wave attack. If you dodge that one, it will take some time for the boss to recover, meaning that you can at least get an R2 in. Now again, I'm doing this fight quite poorly to be honest, because I mess up a lot. For example, when he does his free hit combo, I block and walk backwards, which doesn't really work that well. You need to actually press up against him and move him to his side, so that way his last attack will not hit you and your guard won't be broken. And of course, when you get to his side, you can counter attack. Regardless, if you play defensively and wait for him to do his wave attack, then it's basically just a matter of being patient. Because you may indeed be missing opportunities to attack, but in the end it's not really about speed. So this way you can slowly get his health down.
Yeah, that was actually a really poorly executed fight. I kind of wish I did better for this guide, but hey, at least it does show that this game is a lot more forgiving than people tend to think. Even if you mess up a lot, you can still make it through. Okay, the next section is quite short and I'm simply going to run past everything. And then it's immediately time already to fight Artorias. I do love this DLC by the way, but as I said, it's actually nothing really more than a collection of boss fights. Very memorable boss fights though, that is definitely the case. Okay, I immediately make a mistake because I went into the boss arena with a fire weapon, when lightning will do slightly more damage to Artorias. Regardless, he will still take a lot of hits no matter what weapon you use. Alright, his giant leap attack can easily be dodged by just moving slightly forward. He will almost always go over you. His stab attack is the main attack you want to bait and punish. 
Always make sure to dodge to the right. It can be dodged to the left, but your timing has to be way more precise in that direction. However, sometimes he can throw this dark sludge behind him, and unfortunately I wasn't exactly ready for that. Fortunately, it does hardly any damage, even on Soul of One. When you see him powering up, quickly run towards him, and two hits, when two-handing the reinforced club, will be enough to cancel his power-up. And you can even hit him a third time. His sideways swipe attacks are not really that safe to dodge and punish. You will see me punishing those moves a couple of times. But it's much safer to just keep moving away from him. Just keep your distance and keep baiting his stab attacks. And if you stay at a distance, he will mostly do this attack. For some reason in this fight, he hardly does his somersaults, which are actually really easy to punish. Because if you dodge the first one, you can keep moving to the right if he follows up with a second and third attack. Those will then miss you, meaning that you have the opportunity to counterattack. But be careful, he can do a single, a double or a triple. So don't just assume it will be the triple somersault attack. Here, as you can see, he only did it once, so it wasn't safe to attack. Here, this is how you punish the triple version. Okay then, now I have to make a short trip back to the Tomb of the Giants to get the Skull Lantern. Because we are going to need a light source in order to open the secret passage to where the Silver Pendant can be found. Which is by no means a necessary item for the fight against Manus. In fact, you won't actually see me using it even once. But it is good to have as a sort of rescue device. But I will explain that when we get to him in the final episode. Alright, for the most part I'll be running past all the enemies again. Although that's not always possible, sometimes enemies are blocking your way. First, let's head to where the silver pendant can be found. So here you have to use a light source to make the wall disappear. Okay, here it's best to lure the enemies back so you won't get hit from a distance by the sorcerer on the other end of the bridge. After you take them out, there is no way to avoid the magic attacks from that sorcerer. 
so you will have to roll through his projectiles. Blocking is not exactly safe, because even if you survive, you might get knocked off. Okay, if I look a little lost here, it's because I was trying to remember which direction I needed to take to get to where you can jump the gap to where the chest containing the crest key can be found. This part can be a little bit of a maze if you haven't been here in a while. Well, as long as you don't forget that the chest is a mimic. If you turn right here you will find a shortcut and then we're going to pay Hawkeye Goth a little visit. Now I thought that you have to talk to him before you go to the valley where Calamite is, but that's actually not a requirement. So contrary to what you will see me doing, you can immediately go to Calamite and then back to Goth to ask him to shoot Calamite down. By the way, since Goth is the same as Smo's name, just with a G instead of SM, doesn't that mean that Smo actually should be pronounced Smoth? Yeah, doesn't really have the same ring to it, does it? Ornstein and Smoth? Then again, shouldn't it be Ornstein and Smoth? Or maybe it has been Ornstein all along, and we all just suffer from the Mandela effect. Okay, so as you know, we cannot fight Calamite yet, but we have to have an encounter with him before Goth can shoot him down. So just run into the valley and Homer will back to the bonfire as soon as you see Calamite flying over, breathing fire. Alright, so now Goth can shoot him down so we can fight him. But that will have to wait for the next episode, in which I will finish this walkthrough. 
So make sure to leave a like and stay tuned for the final episode.